Good evening, everybody. I'm going to put my chat up. All right. <clears throat> this evening, we're going to tie the, uh, the Clouser Minnow, uh, invented by uh, Bob Clouser. And uh, this has uh, primarily bucktail in it. It's a little gold flash. I'm using uh, olive bucktail and uh, got some white uh, bucktail I'm be using and using some tan goldish uh, 210 denier thread and uh, the hook is actually a saltwater hook uh, eagle claw uh, billy plate style size 2 hook uh, they are stainless hooks. Uh, hopefully, uh, this weekend I'm going to be doing some saltwater fishing in Panama City, but we got a tropical storm uh, dancing down there, and uh, I hope that doesn't uh, ruin my guide trip, but I got a feeling that it may. So, But maybe I could find some jetties down there and cast some flies along the jetties and in the surf and try to catch some uh, ladyfish or whatever else comes along. But on the trip, the guide trip that I'm going on, it's a tarpon trip, so I'm excited about doing that. I've never done that before, so hopefully I'll get to go. Hopefully we won't get stopped uh, by the storm. But anyway, uh, this is the Clouser. Uh, it's a good variation for bass, uh, saltwater species like hardtail, ladyfish, uh, it does imitate minnows, uh, but some people also say uh, that uh, it could be a shrimp pattern as well. And after this broadcast, I'm going to do another uh, pattern. It's a simple uh, bonefish pattern. I'm going to show you that as well. And for weight, uh, I'm using dumbbell eyes. These are brass. Uh, they're a medium uh, weight. Uh, you do need to vary your weight depending on how deep you want to fish it. So uh, the deeper you go, the heavier you go, and if you want to go even deeper, you're going to have to use a weighted uh, fly line, so uh, keep that in mind. So we'll go ahead and get started. And, uh, first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and put our hook on the vise. And by the way, you're going to see me rotate this vise, and uh, I would not worry about trying to have a rotatable vise. I just so happen to have one. Uh, it's just a convenience thing. You could easily tie this fly without a uh, rotating vise, so don't worry about that. But the first thing we're going to do, we're going to start off with a, a thread bump. One third. So this is the shank right here. Uh, this is halfway. This is about a third of the way from the front. Uh, front of the eye right here. So Try to make your thread bump right here at one third. Uh, now, well, I am going to tie this slow. This is actually a very fast fly to tie. Uh, but I'll tie this slow so you can follow along easy. So I'm going to size up one third, simple thread bump. No. Uh, cut your tag off. Now, we'll put our uh, dumbbell weight on. Now, when you put this on, slide it down the shank, and you let that thread bump hold it, okay? And I'll do about four wraps right here, okay? And I don't figure eight it or anything. I just run four wraps straight across. And I come the other way, and I'll do about five wraps, and I'll make sure that it's on there good and straight, and we'll look at it straight. Now this next part, I'm just going to wrap the bottom firmly. Okay, I'm going to show you how I do that. I just come under this dumbbell eye, go over the shaft, under the other part of the eye, under the dumbbell. Okay. And once I do that, I'll spiral wrap to the front, 
and spiral wrap to the middle. Easy as pie. Easy cheesy Japanesey. Alright, now this is actually the belly of the fly because this fly actually rides in the water column like this right here. Okay, so on the belly, uh, I almost always use white. Of course, you could use any color you want, but uh, for this fly right here, I'm going to use white. So I'm going to get my bucktail. I'm going to pull me some strands off. Now try not, and it's sometimes hard to do, try not to get too many. The belly is actually going to be a little more sparse. Okay, so there you go. I'm going to shake out all the small ones on both directions. You can see some of those uh, coming out. Now, I want probably two to two and a half lengths of my shaft. So I'm going to say that's about right. Now, I'm going to grab this front. Will make me a little oval right here. Now, once I do that, I'm gonna cut this front off. Okay. Now I'm gonna keep that little oval. Now I set that oval right on top there at an angle. Okay. Making sure you can see that. And then once I do that, I'm gonna bring my thread over the top once. Okay. And then I'm gonna pull down, pull up. Okay. And it makes a nice little spiral. It wraps around that shaft real good. And then I'll tie it in. Okay. Now once I do that, don't run this all the way up against the, uh, the dumbbell eyes here, okay? Now on this next part, so I'm at the halfway point right here, okay? Now, you're going to keep a gap under here. I'm going to go up under the dumbbell eye, and I'm going to come on top, and then I'm going to pull it down. Now notice I'm keeping the back end up, so I'm going to put me a couple wraps right there. And then I'm going to spiral wrap this back. Okay, and spiral wrap to the front. Okay, then I'm going to come back to the head here, okay, and I'm going to leave that at the halfway point, and there's the top part of the fly. Now, I'm going to flip this fly, okay, if you don't have a rotating vise, so simply just pull it out, turn it upside down, that's not a big deal, and I'm going to give you some of this flash, I'll pull, I don't know, six or seven strands, and you can use any color you want. off. Now I'm basically going to fold this in half. The way I do this is I wrap it around the thread just like this and I size it up to where it's half pretty well. Okay. Now I pull it. I'm going to pull down just like that right there. Okay. And now I'm going to start wrapping it. Just some firm wraps. By the way, the whole time, all the time is done with this head, so you're constantly building this head. Okay. Now, I'm going to cut this just a little bit longer than what this tail is going to be. So cut that right there. Okay. Alright, now, almost done. Now we're going to put some olive uh, bucktail on top. Now on the top side of this fly, I grab a little more than what I grabbed on the bottom side of the fly. Okay. Look about like that right there. So shake it out. Shake it out good. Trying to get all the short hairs out. 
Now when you size this up, it's going to be either the same length or just a shade shorter than the uh, white buck towel that you just tied in. Same procedure. Okay, so find out where I need to cut it. Okay. Cut it in my oval. Okay. That nice little pretty oval right there. We'll come down on this right here again, same way. Over at the top, loose, and I'm going to pull up right here. Now I'm going to tie it down. Okay. Now we'll build the head. Now I don't bring this back behind the dumbo eyes. I simply just tie it in right here. Now I'm just building my head. I'm almost done. Just want to make a good looking head here. Just firm wraps. Okay. Now I get it in the middle of that head. I'm going to whip finish it. Time for good measure. Tighten that up. Cut it. And there you go. It's as easy as that. Now I'm going to go ahead and epoxy this head. I'll show you how I epoxy it. Now, when you do this epoxy, I put as little as I can on there because I can always come back at it later okay so I'm just cleaning off my brush right here make sure I ain't got no big puddles on my brush get this top side real good because you know especially the saltwater fish they could fray that and mess your fly up so I'm going to epoxy this spiral wrap that I did back here I'm going to epoxy that real good and all this right here and then I'm going to let that dry and there you have it Bob Clouser's Clouser minnow. And again, you could tie this in a bunch of different colors. Uh, I'm going to tie some more. I'm going to do some in some blue, and I'll do some all white. I'll do some tan, some chartreuse. Uh, send me a variety of colors so I can be well prepared when I go down there. But it'll ride through the column just like this right here. Okay? So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, about 10 more minutes, I'm going to come back on here. I'm going to tell you a bonefish fly. It's a shrimp pattern. It's extremely easy. And uh, you'll be surprised how easy it is. Uh, it's a recipe I got off the internet. I'm trying to remember who tied it. But uh, I'm going to try it when I go down to the beach to see if that works for me as well. So give me about 10 minutes, I'll be back on. I've enjoyed it. Uh, if you got any questions, just give me a chat message or send me an email, and uh, I'll answer your questions. Tight fly lines. I'll see you in about 10 minutes.